right, so the first thing that we're going to do when we're starting with um, pastels, first of all, make sure that this is the kind of pastels that you're working with. Uh, you don't want to go with the more expensive pastel and, and end up wasting a lot of dust on it. Um, and they should be relatively in order when you get them. You don't want them to be all messed up and gross and messy. So try and keep track of your, your colors and make sure that they go back kind of close to where you have them to begin with. Um, and it's a really good thing to find these ones that are already broken like this. So if you've got one that's full and you want to use that color, I would recommend breaking it in half anyway. It's just easier to work with. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is a pastel sunset. So with the sunset, I'm going to start with kind of this warm yellow for the sun. And then we're going to follow um, here. And when I use them, I like to wash the edges of them off. And I just do that by wiping it on off. So we're going to follow um, the yellow all the way out to blue. So from there, we're probably going to hit an orange. Which orange? I can do that one. And, and again, it's hard to tell sometimes until you sort of wipe it off what color it's going to be. So and I'll keep it over here just so you can see which colors I'm using. And you're going to want to use something similar to what I'm using. Don't go off on the deep end and go someplace totally different. Like, for example, don't use this orange instead of that one. You want to go with something that's a little more subtle. Um, so yellow, orange, and then we're going to go into sort of a red, and I think this is, I don't know about that red, that sort of orangey red. Maybe we'll use just a little bit of that. I don't want it to be too dull. And then at this point, we're starting to go uh, from, from warm colors into cool colors, because we're going to go to blue. So to make that transition between uh, warm and cool, we're going to have to find sort of an in-between color. I really like colors like this kind of mulberry-ish tone. See how it blends in with that red? That one's kind of nice. And then to get a little bit more violet with it, maybe I'll do one more of those. That's almost the same thing. Maybe this one. Like that. That's a nice one. And then we can go into like the straight up violet, violet. Yeah, that'll blend really nice. And then into blue. Probably like this dark. Yeah, that's a nice dark blue. And then for me, I like to go all the way into the, that midnight blue, this sort of, oh, that one's really hard. You have to be a little careful with this particular shade. Uh, it wants to get sort of shiny at the edge. You can kind of tell, um, or maybe you can't. It gets a little shiny up there, and when it starts to get shiny, it's sort of compacted. So you sort of have to clean it off and make sure that we're dealing with a softer pastel. So there's all the colors that I'm going to use. I've already got them sorted out. And um, now keep in mind that I've always got some paper towels off on the side. And what that's going to do is make sure that my fingers stay clean and my pastels stay clean. This is a really, really dirty process. So you want to make sure that you keep it as clean as you can. So I'm going to start with my yellow right now, and I'm going to create a horizon line. So we're going to do a sunset over the sea. And I don't want it to be right in the middle, because that's boring. I'm going to do about like that. And I'm going to put my sun in here. And it's just a circle. It doesn't have to be real big. Like this. And you'll notice that I'm not going to blend anything yet, at least. So it's you can sort of still see the texture of the paper. That's sort of all right. We don't mind that. And then I'm going to go into the orange. And this is why it's okay to have it broken, even preferable to have it broken. So I'm going to use the side of the orange and bring it all the way up to... See how I'm using the side of the the pastel instead of the end of it. Shh. 
so what's going to happen is I want a hard edge around the, the sun. And see how it kind of fades off then? I'm not pushing down quite so hard and I'm sort of letting it fade off. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to need the orange, the next color, to blend into the orange. So this is my clean side. And I'm going to sort of softly blend it that way. See how it sort of blends together by itself without me even having to work real hard at it? That's exactly what I'm going for. I don't want the paper to really show through a lot. But the colors are already starting to blend themselves. You don't want this to look like a rainbow when you're done. You want it to look like colors that blend, not colors that stand out. So that's why this is going to kind of fade off then. See how it gets kind of smoky around the edge? It's exactly what I'm going for. Then I'm going to go into this sort of yummy color that's sort of turning from red to violet in here. And see how it gets a little bit darker there too as it comes away from the sun. Be really, really careful around the edge. Make sure that you're using the side of... Because the pastel itself blends with the color next to it. You don't have to put your fingers in there and blend it out. Keep going with this. And you'll see this very easy, natural progression from one color to the next. And I'm sort of working that pastel so that it blends as I go. I'm leaving a little pastel behind as it fades out into the next color. Oh boy. Ah, here we go. Now we've gone into full cool color here with that violet and it blends into that sort of pinky magenta thing happening. And this, um, this three quarters place of the sun is why I want to go all the way into that blue so that the violet doesn't take up too much space. Blending right in there. No hard edges between the values here. In the sky at least. Then on into blue. Oh yeah. Right here at the very end, you want it to still stay believable, so that's why we go into this sort of midnight blue out there, the night creeping in. All right, so there we go. I've got just the colors put down. So for the sky, I'm going to make sure that my fingers are nice and wiped off so they're not real dirty. Then I'm going to start here right at the where the orange touches the yellow and blend my way out doing all of the orange then all of the red. See I'm kind of moving in little circles in sort of a rainbowy fashion and I might want to do this a second time because I don't want to get my finger full of a violet color and then go back into the yellow because it turns into brown. There's my first round. And I'm just going to kind of tap off all that color so that it's not just blowing around into the air or into your neighbor's artwork. And then I'm going to try it a second. I'm going to make sure my hand is wiped off again. And this is just a dry paper towel I was playing. And just that area where it creates sort of hard line, I'm going to re blend. 
in here else that's really hard. Anytime you have to reblend in a new area, make sure you've got a clean finger. And you don't want to spend too much time blending with your fingers because you've got oils on your hands and they'll create sort of dark spots. So now I've got all this dust here. Make sure you clean up after yourself there too, otherwise the back of your paper will get filthy. See, it's already starting to accumulate. And if you put it in your portfolio like that, it'll screw up your other pieces. So I wipe all the, the dry off first, off the table and into my hand. Like that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is the water underneath the sun. So we're gonna use the exact same colors. I didn't put them away. They're still sitting over here and they're still clean. Thank you. So with water, you do want hard lines. And what I'm gonna do is take the edge of my uh, pastel and just use the corner right here and put that down. So at the sun, I'm gonna create lines like this. And you want them to be as straight as possible. And see how they get just a little bit bigger as they come out. And then they can get a little smaller down here. Like that. See how that's starting to look like water already? And then I'm just following the same progression. But I wanna make sure that none of my um, paper is showing when it's all said and done. And see how it kind of feeds into each other. I've left little spaces and I'm just kind of filling those spaces. You don't want this to look zebra-y. So make sure that the lines sort of do this and cross over each other like that, okay? So filling that in and then look, I'm leaving new spaces and it's sort of branching out from there. Call some red. Remember the red was kind of mild in the in the sky, so I'm only going to use a little bit of it down here. The red can come all the way over into the yellow a little bit more. What you definitely don't want to see is like stripes of color this way. You don't want yellow, orange, red, like totally vertical. You want it to feel like they blend together. If they look stripey, I'm going to make you redo it, basically. And the whole purpose of this particular project is for you to get a feel for how to blend pastels and how to let them be a little bit and not overdo it. So chances are you're going to mess up on your first one, and that's okay. And if you do, just turn to a new page in your sketchbook and start a new one. See how now with my violets, I'm not going all the way over here to the yellow. I'm letting it kind of stop. And this one's kind of small, so I'm going to use the corner at the top. So I'm not getting dust everywhere. Did I ever tell you that I hate the word purple? I really despise the word purple. It sounds gross. I like the word violet. It sounds much prettier. Personal preference. I learned that from uh, a teacher I had in, in college who hated that word. That sort of resonated with me. His name was Ed Noriega. He taught digital design at Troy University. Great guy. A little intimidating at first, but I ended up liking him a lot. I'll get some blue in there. Okay, so now this is not blended. You can tell that it's still a little raw feeling. So I'm going to wipe my hands off again. And for this one, I'm only going to rub my finger across one time for the water one time in each section so it doesn't get too violet. 
All right. And then I'm going to do it here. And again, wipe your finger off in between each one. Ooh. And there you go. There's the ocean. There's a couple more tricks I'm going to show you before this is totally done. And for the last little bit, I'm going to use some new colors that we haven't used. I'm going to use a little bit of black. And I'm going to use this really hot, bright orange that I told you not to use earlier. There's a, a pink that looks kind of like this, too. The hot, bright orange is going to be for just a couple little clouds that are going to kind of chill out here in the sky. So once pastel is down, you can put a little bit more on top, but now this is not capable of blending, so you want to make sure you put it down the way you want it. And I could probably put that dark violet on top of it right here. Oh, don't do what I just did and blow the that's, uh, dust everywhere. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is just a little island over here. I'm going to add a palm tree. Just be careful with this. You don't want to get your fingers too far on there. But I'm just going to go like that. And you do not have to do this if you're afraid that you're going to screw up what you've done, if it's beautiful. But I like them. And then the fronds go away from the center like that. See how they all go away? They don't go straight out. If you do them, make sure they do that or you'll go have a weird looking palm tree. And I pick my pastel up in between each one and start from the center and move away. Oh, almost did it again. The other thing you can do is just put a piece of paper here and go like that so you're not having to clean up quite so much. There it is, all done. Ta-da.